Why oh why is it so hard to make a good video game movie? Time and time again we've seen examples of people taking established franchises, dropping them in the mud, kicking them a few times by accident as they try to pick them back up, and then pulling huge chunks out of it because it's all dirty now, and then finally, agonizingly, presenting the half-baked and meagre offering to the rabid fan bases who are expecting something so much more. It is painful is what I'm trying to get at, and it makes it very clear that sometimes you get the perfect storm of ignorance in that neither actors nor directors seem to know their source material well. So today we're putting the worst of the worst on trial in a hope that others will take note and not mess themselves quite so hard. I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are the 10 most sacrilegious video game movie moments. Number 10. Silent Hill – Changing the Main Cast's Meanings we begin with something that fundamentally is so very wrong in this film, however, for those with only a passing fancy in the Silent Hill franchise, it might not be that big of a deal as the film was actually pretty serviceable. So in the second game, James Sunderland visits the town of Silent Hill to look for his wife Mary. There he encounters a ton of enemies which have, well, very strange appearances. The sexy, faceless nurses and the awfully aggressive Pyramid Head are the stars of the show, and they come to represent James's resentment towards his wife's medical care and his sexual aggression respectively. Both enemies are symbolic of his desires and repressed emotions, and therefore they are tied directly to his character. In the Silent Hill film, however, we see Rose encounter these same beings, but as there's no connection to the hero, they mean nothing other than fan service. They still make an impact for sure, I mean that skin ripping scene is immense, but it changes the tone dramatically. Plus, this shoehorn husband-wife storyline of the film slows the pace of the title down by having Sean Bean act as an exposition machine. Original Silent Hill protagonist Harry was desperate to find his daughter, but here, any time the pace is looking like it's going to pick up, it's slowed back down again to explain to scene Bean why it's so important. Also, Sean doesn't die, so that's an automatic negative, right? Number 9. Alone in the Dark – Turning into a Buddy Cop Movie now, to be fair, I could have just made this list entirely out of Uwe Boll's films and just called it a day, but that wouldn't have been fair. However, I do have to include a few, and we begin with Alone in the Dark, and how this film could not have been more opposed to what the game is about. So the last time that I checked, Alone in the Dark wasn't about a supernatural detective agency trying to save the world from demons. In fact, we're sure that the scripts for this and Hellboy didn't just get switched up. It would certainly explain why we get a wise-cracking Christian Slater partnering with Tara Reid, and why the action was a bit too too daft to be dark. Basically, you can see this as a film that wasn't based on anything from the game except the names. Plus, you know what this film had so little of that is kind of essential to the game? Actual darkness. This was less alone in the dark and more together in the often well-lit. Absolute boo. Number 8. Street Fighter – Almost No Iconic Special Moves now, Capcom really should have learned some lessons from watching the Super Mario Bros. film collapse in on itself, and trust me, we'll get to that. And while I absolutely love how craptacular this film actually is, I can most definitely say that it's a bastardization of everyone's favorite fighting game. And I'm not talking about the thick cheese that covers this entire project, I mean, I love that. I'm not talking about the laughable stealth boat, I mean, I love that. Nor any of the weird casting choices, I love that. I'm talking about the fact that we barely got to see anything remotely like a special move from any of the cast. And this was down to a conscious effort to make the film, and I'm not joking, more realistic. And I use that in heavy quotation marks. But the directions given were that we were allowed to see the likes of Blanka, but no stretchy arm, dull sim, no flash kick no Hadoukens, and definitely no Tiger effing uppercuts, and that is an absolute shame. Number 7. Max Payne and the Lack of Bullet Time When you think of Max Payne, you instantly like to go horizontally sideways and leap while firing bullets in slow motion with your fingers, right? It's kind of his thing. And honestly, it's kind of what put his franchise on the map, with the third game being something of a bullet ballet for how beautiful it is. However, clearly that is not the message that the 2008 movie sought to look at because while the film tries to retell the story of the first game from drug trials going wrong and families being murdered and Mona being very, very sexy, there's a nice joke for you there, the action barely slows down at all. In fact, you can count how many times slow motion is used on one hand. I know if it was overused that people would tire of it, but come on, surely there should have been much more of it being used to tie it better to the source material. Number 6. House of the Dead – The Whole… Rave Thing If you thought Alone in the Dark was bad enough, be grateful that you may not have sat through this. 
Mr. Bowles' first disastrous attempt to get a game to screen should have warned off everyone letting this man sign a multi-film contract, which Ubisoft clearly did not care about, because he gave us this. The House of the Dead dance party backstory that no one ever wanted ever, thank you, no. Now, if we're being sympathetic, we can see that Bowl clearly didn't want his film to carry with it a Resident Evil rip-off vibe, but his choice to set the film on an island which is hosting a rave was utterly bizarre. But, but that's not even the maddest bit of this, because it turns out that the island was home to a naughty 15th century Spanish pirate who dabbled in zombies and immortality serums and is awoken by the sounds of Scooter and DJ Juicy Jules and his hard-beat fools. And if you think my DJ handle is bad, then this film was bloody worse. Number 5. Final Fantasy The Spirits Within – Having Nothing To Do With The Actual Games When Squaresoft broke into the 32-bit era of the PlayStation and onwards, they were renowned for the quality of their full-motion video cutscenes and their games, which led many fans to cry out, MAKE A MOVIE! MAKE A MOVIE! So they did, and when it came out, the fans were like, OH NO! YOU'VE MADE THE WRONG… THIS IS… Mm, THIS IS NOT THE MOVIE I WANT TO SEE! Now, The Spirits Within, from a technical standpoint, was incredible, taking four years to create, and it looked like a visual spectacle that we hadn't seen before. However, when you actually try to connect this to any of the Final Fantasy games, you will fail hard. No summons, nothing in conjunction with the series' main plot points about empires and elementals. No, it's just a sci-fi film with a license slapped on. A beautiful license, but a boring one by many people's standards. Number 4. Super Mario Bros. The Gritty Look Just… Just stop. Just put it in the ground, along with my childhood. This film is an affront to everything Super and Mario Mario, and I hate the fact that Mario Mario is a thing. Now, objectively, I can't even say that this is a good film if you took the Super Mario out of it. It's just a bad movie made worse by weird design choices. For example, why oh why would anyone want to ditch the Mushroom Kingdom for this bizarre, gritty cyberpunk city that looks filthier than Josh's search history? And yes, Josh, I have seen. Gross. The only two sections of this film that even remotely look like the game itself are the bobombs and the super scope that has been turned into an evolution ray. That's good use of the license, but the rest, the 99.9% .9 of the rest of the film, is garbage, and not even Bob Hoskins can save the performance. The logic behind the screenplay was to go for a ghostbusters style vibe of grit and grime instead of this source material, and as a result, the film tanked, leaving Nintendo to not risk any of their IPs as live-action movies ever again. Brilliant. Number 3. Mortal Kombat Annihilation Just everything. Okay, now you've got no excuse. Mario Brothers, shame on me. Street Fighters, shame on you. But this Mortal Kombat sequel, just shame. Endless bloody shame. Now, the first film was actually quite surprising in how on brand it was, in that it was over the top, silly in all the right places, and full of more hole fisting than even your mum and I get up to down the bingo hall each Thursday. Honestly, she is the Shao Kahn of showing her. Well, you get the idea there. And also, that's my one per list. The second film, however, well, not so much. I mean, killing Johnny Cage within minutes of the opening, swapping out Raiden for a completely different actor, and dropping nearly all of the action in a fighting game movie are but some of the awful decisions made. Plus, less said about the animalities in-joke, the better. And just for the record, before I go on to the next one, the theme song you had was perfect. Hell, Scott had it play at his wedding for Christ's sake, so this remake can bloody do one. Number 2. Resident Evil Ditching the Mansion if you had to pinpoint anything in particular about the first Resident Evil game, what would come to mind? I mean, zombies, obviously, and yes, terrible voice acting for a second. Stop it! Don't open that door! But also, the mansion, right? It's the setting of the entire first game, and it's so atmospheric that it can still scare to this day. And yet, this is the one location that the film version gives us the least amount of time with, beginning there but zipping to an underground lab. However, unlike many other points on this list, this choice actually worked in the film's betterment, because it actually made more sense to contain the undead rather than give them a mansion that they would likely all wander away from. Yet, that's all the credit I'm giving here, as the treatment of Nemesis in this film franchise is a big no-no from me, my dude. And number one, Hitman, drastic character and pace changes. No, 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 no. Okay, for a start, he's not bloody bold. Yes, that's right, this shaved head is not bold. Just get the razor out and come back with a grade zero. Come on, it's one of Agent 47's most iconic looks. Yet, if I'm going to look at an aspect of this film that's more damning than his actual appearance, then we have to look at how this air quote silent assassin was anything but, blowing up more things than Michael Bay and held all the subtlety of a hammer. 
It was not a cerebral flick by any standards. And you know what? I think that's a huge problem that a lot of video games have to deal with. That for some reason, people just treat these projects as offerings for idiots. We can have thought-provoking and emotional games, so why can't we get the same from their movies? It's a strange indication of how Hollywood sees the games industry, and here's hoping that in the future they realise that it doesn't need to be dumb to get us to watch it and have fun. And there we go, those were 10 of the most sacrilegious video game movie moments. Let me know what you thought about it down in the comments section below. Any more dumb things that you've seen in video game movies that made you irate. But before we go, my friends, I want to talk to you about another thing that is not dumb, and that is taking care of yourself mentally and physically. You owe it to yourself, and trust me, you can ask for help. There are so many, so many venues of opportunities to get the help that you need if you are struggling with stuff. But before we go as well, just remember, it is okay to fail, it is okay to to try again, it is okay to ask for help, and it is okay to be you. You are bloody special. And if you want to chat about this or anything else, then you can follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. And until then, I've been Jules, you have been awesome, never forget that, and I'll speak to you soon. Bye!